soy el fuego que... Realtor Sensei Show. I am Sandra Jauregui Schwapitz, and today our guest is Alex Fernandez. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on your show today, Sandra. It is a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you. So, Alex, his accounting career began over 30 plus years ago. So, don't tell me much about that because that's a really long time. <laughs> He's graduated from Florida International University with a bachelor's in accounting. He's uh, married, has two children and two grandchildren. And I know that his little girl, <laughs> have him rubbing his finger. That's how you, how you said, Alex? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> he had held several positions as a financial controller in industries. Alex is eager to help business owners and entrepreneurs to grow their business, provides a solid base and assistance in the areas of tax planning, accounting, consulting, and advisory service. I'm not going to say much more. I want him to tell us who is Alex Fernandez. Well, thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, again, like I said earlier, it, it is a privilege to be here. And, and it's a passion. Um, you, you are absolutely correct. I've been in this industry that is called the accounting and financing world for over plus 30 years. So I do have a wealth of information and very, you know, broad side that I can share and I can discuss with my clients. Uh, this has been a, a, a road to, to for knowledge of dealing with different type of industry whether it's auto lending, whether it's banking, whether it's attorneys, whether it are real estate agents, whether it are you know insurance agents, uh, kitchen manufacturers, these are all but a few of the type of industries that you know uh, we have helped before in the past. Now, grant you, each industry has its own uniqueness to to some of the accounting you know issues that they may see or may have on a day to day basis. We, we happen to have, you know, uh, the knowledge and the experience to be able to bend and make sure that we understand our customers or our clients needs in order to provide an accounting service for them. Like you said earlier, uh, this is the passion that I do and I've been, you know, providing that service since I started my company over 14 years ago. So I'm, I'm happy to be here today, Sandra. Thank you very much. Alex, tell us a little bit about how did you come to the United States when you got married, your children? Tell us about a little bit about you. Well, uh, I, again, um, we, I came when I was 11 years old. I'm Cuban born. Uh, we resided in the state of New Jersey. We were there, you know, my family, my mother, my three siblings and my dad for over 11 years. OK, and then I moved to South Florida and I've been here ever since. Okay, and here I have uh, two wonderful kids. Uh, our daughter, she's a high school teacher. Our son, a firefighter paramedic with City of Miami, and I um, also have two wonderful grandkids. Uh, a eight-year-old boy, his name is James, and Katie, she's our four-year-old granddaughter. So, and she just wraps me around her finger every single day. <laughs> so, tell us about when and why did you decide to become an accountant? What attracted well, you to that? I, 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 I'll share a very personal story. Uh, before I literally became an accountant, I was actually in a, an EMT, an emergency medical technician. And, and our daughter, when she was very small, I was working 24 hours a day, 48 hours a day, every two days, straight. So one day I go home to, you know, hug her and kiss her and she was like fighting me off fighting me off you know and like i go to my wife but you know what's what's she happening what's happening here she goes you know, you, your your work so much that she doesn't recognize you and at that moment in time you know i made the decision to you know uh find find what i needed to do get a job in the accounting field working monday through fridays you know nine to five and that's where everything began that's where everything began so that is the reason why i'm not an accountant today i'm not in a a paramedic which my son is so, and, and that's the funny <laughs> part about it. 
He did take some, mine out. There is someone in the family that it's continuing what you were doing at that time. <laughs> that is correct. And, and he chose that career all by himself. So it's not anything I pushed him on it. He, he just happened to like that and that's what he did. So I'm very proud of, of both, both of our kids, our children. Yeah. Nice, great. So tell us about how does it feel to helping all these your clients with making decisions in life that will be helpful for their future? Well, um, m many, many years ago, uh, I made the decision that I wanted to learn as much as the current tax laws and how to do things properly accounting wise to help you know my clients. And, and that was through a personal choice uh, that I did because uh, Many, many years ago, when I was a, still a young man, I, you know, someone in my taxes, they made such a, a, a mess out of it. And I said, no, I got to learn this. No one's ever going to make a mess on this. And, and that's what I bring to the table. I, I make sure that my clients, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the engagement, they know exactly what's going on with both their corporate and our personal taxes. That way they know exactly where all the numbers came from. I allow them to ask not one, not two, but a hundred questions if they need to. And I'm happy to answer them. And, and most of the time they, they do appreciate that because this is not just, you know, come here, you know, here's the tax returns, you know, sign on that dotted line and see you next year. So we take the time. We're proud to take the time and make sure that they're happy and they understand their taxes because at the end of the day, it is their responsibility on the taxes. It's true. It's it's really our responsibility to make sure that we're doing the right things with the taxes. <laughs> the, the right moves, I would say. Yes. So what it motivates you to help owners and entrepreneurs to grow their business and explain the audience what methods do you use? Well, my, my motivation is that I, I noticed that the clients and the business owners, no one has ever taken the time and explained to them the, the, the disadvantages and disadvantages of some of the reactions that they, they take on a day to day basis. Uh, I, I explain to them and I educate them enough to let them know that there, there's re things to do and there's reasons and there are ramifications when things are done the right way. And when they're not done the right way, there are ramifications also, which sometimes are penalties. So we strive to make sure that they we have to understand the law so we can explain to them, so we can teach them, so they can then learn and do things correctly. And that's my motivation, that the typical client whether it's a young, you know, a new real estate agent that's coming on board or someone who's been already been there for three or four years, but no one has taken the time to explain to them the pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages. So let's talk about why to incorporate. What are the advantages and the disadvantages that you're talking about? Well, when when you incorporate, let's 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 compare uh, someone who incorporates as a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is just the fact that I, Alex Fernandez, now wants want to begin. <coughs> excuse me. I want to begin real estate, you know, to sell real estate. All the income is going to be taxed on my personal tax rate, whether it could be the lowest ten percent or it could be the highest between. 22 and 30 percent that all has a ramification if 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 you incorporate there are ways to reduce the amount of taxes that you can pay legally under the current tax uh, rules and regulations to to be able to you know do your tax declaration uh, for your taxes so you have to literally make sure that you enter all your income all your expenses and we'll walk you through what are deductible expenses and what are not deductible expenses. So we make sure that at the end of the day, you are paying a just tax rate. Therefore, you know, you're in compliance with the current tax laws. So now let's, let's talk about real estate um, professionals. Okay. Get their license. Nobody tells them, nobody guides them that what they can do as whether being incorporated or the sole proprietor. So why 
they will choose to be incorporated. I know you said they can save in the, in the taxes, showing their expenses, but I know also that there is different kinds of incorporation. So what will be the one and the right one that they should choose, or it depends on their income? I, I don't know, explain me a little bit about that. I'm happy you answer that you asked that question, and, and, and the answer is the following. I do not automatically decide to open up a type of corporation for the client. I actually go through an interview process because I, I like to ask the client certain personal questions that are going to affect how the tax treatment and what they want to do in the future. For example, you can have the same real estate agent. We might have a 25-year-old, a 35-year-old, and a 55-year-old. They all, they all come to me at different time and say, I want to open up a corporation. I might put each of them in three different type of corporations, depending on the interview process that I do with them. Why? We take into consideration longevity. We take into consideration self-employment income. We take into consideration retirement income. A 25-year-old is going to work a lot more years than a 55-year-old. So depending on those answers, we look for the best type of corporation or LLC that they need to open today to be able to meet their future goals, because this is what I'm doing. I'm thinking of their future. I'm thinking of the legacy that they're going to be leaving to for themselves and their families once they reach the tender age of 65, 66, 67, and they go retire. I want to make sure that they're protected. And that is what, again, different type of scenarios, different ages, I might put them in three times or different type of corporations. Wow. You see, that's knowledge. And if you don't know that or anybody will talk to you about what route you have to take, then you mm -hmm. can be doing something that is not beneficial for your yes. uh, company. Yes. I, I, I often, I often, honestly, I get a call, so, you know, uh, people find me in, in Facebook and Google and LinkedIn and Google Maps, Google Business. Alex, I want to, I want to open up an LLC because I read on, 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 on Google that LLC is the right, the, the company I need to open. I go, wait, 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 wait a second. Where, how old are you? How long have you been in the United States? How long have you contributed to Social Security? Do you, are you going to be buying a home in the next two to three years? These, these are all valid questions that if we don't prepare today, you're going to make it harder on yourself down the road to be able to accomplish those particular tasks. You have something very important in, in your answer. You said if the person, let's talk about now anybody that's self-employed, it's going to purchase a home and the accountant or the person that do their taxes do not explain them or ask them the questions that you just asked, uh, told us and say tell me about what do you want to accomplish then you also can set that client to failure because they will not be able to purchase a home that is correct. I, I've often have seen, you know, clients that come to me, uh, Alex, you know, I'm, uh, I just found a property. I want to buy it. Uh, I, I was referred to you. The, these are brand new clients. The first thing I ask, you know, let me have your last two years income tax return. And, and, and sadly, I look at them and based on their income, you know, Good, bad, or indifferent, or however they were done, I'm going to you according to this. If you take the average of the two years income taxes, you you're averaging thirty, forty-five thousand dollars in today's date. That's not enough to buy homes in what the market is right now. It's very difficult for these things to happen. Yeah, and it's very important to be guided um, to the right path in order to prepare that person to purchase a home. So um, could you please tell us a little bit what can, I don't know if I will say a self-employed or a real estate agent can deduct in the year, what can we deduct from our, for our taxes if we are uh, incorporated? Okay. 
Uh, ge general business expenses are as follows. If, 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 and I always tell the clients, uh, you know, the, the following issue. If you need to buy this particular item and it's directly associated with your business, it is a business deduction, okay? For example, as a real estate professional, as a, as a financial advisory pro 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 professional, okay, you need to be presentable. So therefore, we're going to allocate also some type of business expense to what's called proper attire. Imagine going to a new client with your hair not done, not properly dressed. What image are you conveying to the client that I want to do business with you? So yes, proper attire is you know mandatory or in, in, in our particular industry. So some type of, of, of expense need to be allocated to proper attire. Just like on the females, you know, you have to have your hairs done, you have to have your nails. But then again, those are some expenses. Again, the, the use of your cell phone, okay, since you're constantly on the phone with clients. The use of your cell phone is also a business deduction. Your internet, your long, you know, now there's no longer long distance, but, you know, your internet, your cell um, monthly expenses are all deductible. Some meals, when you go out with a client and you happen to meet at a Starbucks or you meet at a cheesecake factory to have lunch, some of that meal expenses may be deductible because you're farming, you're, you're trying to learn or land the business you might not necessarily make it but the fact that you didn't you know the person did not use your services it was still in the act of creating a new uh, potential client so those are business deduction your car mileage is, is or, or your car expenses we of, often especially the real estate agents have to jump on the car monday through friday and sometimes saturdays and sundays to go visit new clients, new properties, take pictures, you know, that, th those things. Your, your either actual expenses may be deductible to a certain degree, and also your car mileage might be also be deductible. What I would like to do is compare the both, and whichever one's going to give us the greater uh, business expense deduction, then we suggest to the client, this is on our recommendation that you should either use the actual expenses or the business mile. Okay. So your computers at home, your computers for you to be able to search, you know, the MLS, your ink, your paper, that's, those are all business expenses. Sometimes your, your training, if you have to pay to uh, keep your license as a real estate agent, your education, those are all business expenses that you can deduct when at the end of the day, when you prepare your taxes. Uh, other things, for example, could be, you know, uh, what else? What about uh, if, you uh, if you purchase uh, other items that you need it for the business? That's also business or, or equipment are also business printer. Your printer is a business expense. What about uh, because I did uh, work at home for almost 20 years um, mm -hmm. in the business, 22 years, and I work at home and I use my office and I was told that that can be the that not not a, a big amount but it's an office to like I pay rent to myself for the office is that correct is that <laughs> I was guided the right way there there that's always been a big issue with the internal revenue service there is a small allowance for the home office deduction for business expenses. A lot of people, a lot of clients, they hear, you know, from friend of a friend, oh, you can do this, you can do that, but and some, you know, you, you're limited. So sometimes your square footage has to be taken into consideration of the room where you operate. And it has to be, according to the IRS, solely and ex for exclusive use. Now that exclusive use, could, it's very black and white at the IRS level. You cannot have a, an exclusive use for business and have, you know, be doing personal stuff also on, on, on in the same room where your business are. At that moment in time, you lose that home deduction. So you have to be very, very careful. And sometimes 
those are more of a personal nature that I deal with the clients. And after a, a five minute, you know, back and forth interview, then we make a decision on what's the best way to, you know, deduct the home, uh, home office exclusion expense. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's very interesting. So as 1099 self-employed, should we, and if we incorporate, should we pay ourselves with the W-2, a, a, have a payroll? Okay. What one, would be your one, answer? All right. The IRS continues to educate us for us to educate the clients. There, there, there is one particular type of corporation, which is an S corp, a small business corporation, that one of the main uh, components of it is that it has uh, the, the owner or, or the, the shareholder of the corporation can, can withdraw from the corporation the profits in two ways, either on distributions or a salary. If they distribute it as salary, there is a 15.3% tax automatically, which is for Medicare, Medicaid, and, and, and for the future, both as an employer and employee. Distributions do not carry the self-employment tax, okay? So it's, you know, you're getting that and there is no 15.3% tax amount on it. Now, granted, let's say you make $100,000 and you take 40 and you literally have $40,000 in expenses. Your net income is $60,000. You can certainly take the $60,000 and say, okay, I don't want to pay 15.3%, which is about $7,700 because it's a distribution. But the IRS is coming down a little more strict on the business owner and said, all the $60,000 cannot be distribution. It has to be some type of a mix of salary and distributions. I usually have a rule of thumb, okay? Anywhere between 30 and 40% salary is acceptable to me. Certain industry and certain income, I will advise my clients, those numbers can be either increased a little bit or decrease somewhat. So that is also at, at the tail end of everything. It's more of a personal question sometimes. But yes, as an S corporation, you have the component of self-employment tax or distribution that have no self-employment tax. Now, a sole proprietor, has that 15.3% no matter what. So you are paying for that as a sole proprietor. And also if you happen to become, uh, if you create an LLC and you're the only one member, what's called a single member or disregarded entity, you're still paying that 15.3% tax before federal taxes even kick in. Wow, wow. So if I'm understanding right, a sole prepared, no, sorry, uh, S corporation will be something that you will advise to a, a 1099 or a real estate agent. Correct. I may, I may, I may advise a S corporation. That is correct. But again, part of the interview process, where do you see yourself two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now? I need to talk to you. <laughs> we need to. Do so. <laughs> so tell me what are your closing thoughts to the audience of having an accountant being part of the team? Meaning not only the team, if you are only a solo agent, how okay. important is that that person create a relationship with an accountant or financial, with an accountant and financial right. advisor? I, I would like to paint a little picture so you can get an idea, okay? The importance of having a trusted accountant that's part of your immediate network. Think about, think about a boxing ring, okay? You are the boxer, you're in there fighting it out. What's my responsibility as your accountant? I have three responsibilities and I'm on the outside of the boxing ring. I have either the water bottle when you get thirsty to drink, the little stool for you to sit when you're tired, or the towel to fan you when you're, you know, exhausted. 
okay? That's what we bring to the table. We're there to support you. I'd rather you go and sell your real estate services, your marketing services, your insurance services, go sell and do what you do best. We're in the background making sure we're protecting you from every single out there source that's going to come and try to hurt your company. That's our responsibility to make sure that you are protected. All Great. The time. That is very important. And thank you very much for that advice. And maybe a question that you don't want to be <laughs> asked um, in the show is what is the charge? for the first consultation of okay. any real estate agent or any other business owner want to, to sit with you. All right, I, I am gonna extend myself. So I'm gonna offer a free 30 minute consultation in between now and November the 12th. We can do it via Zoom. We can do it in person in our offices, which are located on 8585 Sunset Drive, Suite 105, Miami, Florida. 33143, or we can do it via Zoom. So we'll be happy to do a free 30 minute consultation, get a, get to know the client, get a little more information and, and see what they have to say. Running that between now and November 12th. Remember, from now to November 12th, reach out to Alex Fernandez's company and he will give you 30 minutes 30 minutes for free consultation to guide you the best way to choose what would you like to do. First of all, it's we are right now, it's close to end of the year. Let's get prepared and ready to plan for 2022. And Alex will be the one helping you with that. So yes. Alex, thank you very much for your time. And I'm very happy to, to have you today. And I know that you will be coming to visit Naples on November the 17th to do right. a live um, a presentation. So for all the people that would like to see Alex and meet Alex in person, remember November 17th from 12 to 1, he will be doing a presentation in Venture Ventura X, Venture X, 4850 Tamayami Trail, Suite 301, Naples, Florida, 34103. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me and I will give you Alex information. Or if Alex, you want to repeat your number or your email? Yes. Well, happy to do so. Our office number is 305-800-1040. 305-800-1040. My email address is alex at executivetax.net. Alex at executivetax.net. Here to help you. We're open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Fridays, but reach out to us via email, via the office number, and we'll be happy to answer any of all your questions. Thank you, Alex. Have a good uh, weekend and very happy for everybody to have you in this show. Don't forget to come back next Friday, same time. We will have another speaker in our show. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Sandra. Pleasure. Have a good day.